Good evening and welcome to KTN Prime this Tuesday, the 28th day of February 2017. We're so glad you've made the time to be with us. Those are our top stories tonight. We have that and much more, including business news and sports news. So do definitely stay tuned for that and more. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole and our sign language interpreter is William Silla. So let's get the show started and on to our top stories this evening. Kenya's embattled Auditor General Edward Oko has challenged a petition presented to Parliament seeking his removal from office. Appearing before the National Assembly's Committee on Finance, Planning and Trade, the Auditor General read malice in the speed with which the Speaker and the Clerk of the National Assembly processed the petition filed by lawyer Emmanuel Mwagambo. I'm at peace with this petition. And why am I at peace with this petition? Because I think it's malicious uh, and it's bordering um, witch hunting. This petition, the affidavit was sworn on 13th of February. It was filed in Parliament on 14th of February. On the same day, it appears to have been committed to the clerk. And on the same day, it appears to have been committed to the speaker. Is Mr. Chairman, you will also need to address the question of the apparent conflict of the standing orders. Standing order number 227.2 and 234 in the following manner. Under 227.2, this committee has 60 days. Under 234, the committee has 14 days. Because this is a quasi-judicial process, and Section 3 of the FAA Act says it guides all quasi-judicial processes, then the Fair Administrative Action Act becomes a very fundamental legislation that would guide this committee. And it says three things. And those are the three things we want to point out. Number one, Mr. Chairman, that at any time you are dealing with a quasi-judicial matter in Section 3, or any matter that affects the right of another, the most fundamental issue, if one is accused, is that you must know your accuser. I, I tend to get the feeling that this is being personalized. Believe you me, believe you me, I did not, I did not come here bred, uh, out of uh, malice or out of any hidden agenda. The ramifications of this action out there where my family and I really are not in an island. So that was the essence why I did not want this to be out there in the public because it essentially goes to putting a face to the petition. When you were petitioning parliament, you knew that this was going to be in the public. And then why, why are you uh, saying that this matter should be heard in camera when it, parliament is a public institution? I have had all manner of uh, accusations leveled towards me, a gun for hire, uh, puppet, uh, a puppet for certain puppeteers. This is not a casual matter. This is a very serious matter of serious allegations against a very serious public officer, a very serious independent constitutional office. So him even reading what is already in this document does not go into the details that he would require a camera session for, because this document already is public. It is here, the media has it, it is in public. Those are the proceedings earlier on today in the National Assembly and of course uh, the Auditor General taking issue with just how fast this petition was processed in the National Assembly. And so our big question tonight to you is do you agree with the Auditor General that the Speaker and the Clerk are too eager to see him removed from office? Do you agree with the Auditor General that the Speaker and the Clerk are too eager to see him removed from office. SMS us your thoughts, start with a yes or no brief comment, your name and location to the number 22155. You can also get us on Twitter at KTN News, at Yvonne Okwara. Please use the hashtag KTN Prime and we'll be sampling your views throughout this live newscast. Now, of course, this is our top story for the day and Patrick Amimo was... Um, following the proceedings all day uh, within the precincts of Parliament. And he joins me now live from our city centre studios for just some more analysis on this. Patrick, good evening. Let's start with giving our viewers a background um, as to this whole petition, how it came to be, considering particularly that the DPP had cleared him of any wrongdoing. 
Uh, thank you, Yvonne. This is a matter that is now attracting national attention. Uh, we saw early, early this month the Director of Public Prosecution come out and complain that he was being pressured by a section of leaders uh, to prosecute this matter after he went to court and said that uh, uh, his, after a thorough scrutiny that uh, the, the Auditor General was not uh, guilty of any offence, but he took some members of staff from the Kenya National Audit Office to face the Anti-Corruption Commission with regard to flouting procurement laws. Ever since we've seen uh, this petition move to the National Assembly, and that informs why the Auditor General felt that uh, the Speaker and the Clerk did rush the process to have him removed from office. Some of the matters conversed here were... Uh, what happened way back in 2013 to 2014, and we saw uh, various institutions charged with investigating the matter tackle the tackle the, the, the issues. One was to do with the procurement, uh, uh, the procurement of the audit uh, vaults uh, software worth 100 million shillings. And the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission detectives went through the, the, the way the, man, the, the software was procured. It's an Oracle software. The way it was procured, and they found that some staff, senior staff of, from the National Audit Office, were guilty for prosecution, and they did recommend that. And the Director of Public Prosecution went through the file and felt that uh, there was evidence, uh, there was enough evidence to prosecute the officers for flouting the procurement laws. That matter is is in court, as, as we say, under the Corruption Court. But the petitioner, this lawyer, Mwagambo, uh, came up with another petition. He went to the courts, and it appears the case, he, he says that he was representing some clients in court, and the clients lost the, the, the case in, 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 the, in the court. But now he comes, he, he's coming to the National Assembly to push his case through, and that's why we saw even in the National Assembly that matters were heated. Maybe if I could bring you up to speed, speed on some of the petitions I have to do with them, he claims that uh, the Auditor General was managing his office through remote control. Uh, he says that he went overseas and spent about one million shillings of, of airtime trying to communicate with his staff in, 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 back in Nairobi. And he says this was a waste, a waste of public resources. But then he could not pro provide documentary evidence to show that uh, the Auditor General spent these one million shillings uh, to, to run office while out of the country. The other allegation, he says that uh, the Auditor has, been, is, has five vehicles which he has given to the family members, the, the wife and daughters, that uh, they are using government vehicles, five of them, and he claims uh, this wastage of public public funds, especially when it comes to the use of uh, these particular vehicles. The other matter he's, he's, he's complaining about is that uh, uh, this, he says that the Auditor General has practiced, is practicing nepotism and he's hired some senior staff in the National Audit Office by, by, by with uh, having bypassed the advisory advisory uh, board on how he, he should hire senior staff. And lastly, maybe the other allegation is that uh, there was there was an office, in, there were offices in Mombasa which were paid for one full year, 10 million shillings uh, for the use of the National Audit Office, but then the Auditor General did not make use of those offices. So lawyer Mwagambo feels that uh, this is a waste of, waste of public funds and Auditor General Edward Ouko should be removed from office. It is a matter that members of so the MPs in the floor take partisan positions on it. Yvonne? Yes. So talk to us then what happens after the grilling. What is the procedure after this parliamentary committee hears uh, from both sides, the petitioner and the Auditor General? What next? After this, uh, the, the matter, lawyer Mwagambo is expected to appear before the House tomorrow to bring documentary evidence on some of the allegations he's put across. Uh, that is what members were keen to see whether they, he can substantiate his allegations. It's also the matter that the Auditor General wanted to see so that he can also cross-examine Mwagambo. Mwagambo initially had said that he wanted the, the proceedings to be uh, conducted in a uh, in camera because he said that he fears for his life. He claimed that uh, some people had, uh, he had received some threatening calls ever since he filed the petition, but that matter was ruled out. He was given, he was told to give primary evidence. Then if there's any secondary evidence he feels that uh, he, can, uh, he can give in camera, then maybe that opportunity will be available to him. But we are not very, very sure whether uh, uh, Magambo will come to, to the committee uh, because he said he might come, he might appear or not. Uh, but so it's something that we see whether tomorrow he'll honor the day to come with those documentary evidence that seeks to, to, uh, to pin the Auditor General. But after these, uh, when members will sit, sit down, then they'll go through the, com the, 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 the evidence that has been proc uh, pro procured before them from both the petitioner and the aud Auditor General, because the Auditor General has also given a very, very detailed report on the petition, on the petition raised by Mwagambo and is, is uh, given it... Uh, each point uh, with a, a rebuttal on why he feels that uh, he's, he's, he's innocent and he's also even told the National Assembly to go through the ISPAC 
to verify some of the allegations. So after that, members will go converse the report and come up with the report and see whether there are enough grounds to remove the, uh, the auditor general. If not, uh, then um, they will also present a similar report to the committee, uh, uh, to, to parliament. But then uh, given the way the, the, the charged atmosphere that was among the mem different members of the house, we saw those leaning towards the opposition trying to come to the defense of the auditor general and those allied to the jubilee side uh, wanting the matter to be prosecuted and maybe see the, 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 the case concluded. But that one now, it will depend on the report they'll write. There are times when a majority agree on a report and then it is brought to the floor of the house. Other times there is a, there is a dissenting view and the, the dissenters are allowed to have to come up with a minority report which is also presented to the house. Then members of parliament will have to vote for that for that report. They'll debate it and vote to see whether it has any merits or it, it lacks merit. If it lacks merit then it will be it will be thrown out. If, the, if there's any merit then it means that uh, if, it's, it, if it has any merit and then it's passed by by majority of the members in the National Assembly then it will mean that uh, the president will have to form a tribunal to go and to, to go find the nitty gritty details on where, why uh, maybe if there's enough evidence to remove the Auditor General from office, Yvonne. All right, great. Thank you very much for that update and, of course, explaining to us uh, what lies ahead in this particular petition. That's uh, Patrick Amimo, who joins us from our city centre studio. He's been following uh, the proceedings in Parliament where uh, the Parliamentary Committee is hearing a petition uh, to oust the Auditor General, Edward Oko. He will definitely keep uh, on that one and we will definitely update you on the same. Now... Political leaders from West Pocot County have termed as illegal a shoot-to-kill order that Deputy President William Ruto issued last Friday in Baringo. Led by West Pocot Senator John Lonyangapur, the leaders claim the Deputy President overstepped his mandate. They're also calling for the suspension of a security operation that has seen the government deploy national police reservists to fight bandits. Rita Tinina has the details. I swear solemnly. And sincerely affirm. In Chesongoch Elgeo Marakwet County, National Police Reservists took a north. This batch, among 523 reservists deployed in the latest security operation to cabin security in Baringo, West Pokot, and Marakwet. It is the worst strategic security mistake ever committed by a government. Leaders from West Pokot and Baringo argue that the deployment of the KPR will only serve to worsen the insecurity situation. Instead of disarming all communities that have guns, the state, through wrong advice, is arming communities to fight each other. If you give somebody who even does not know even how to use, because we have seen this one here. Giving civilian over 600 guns in three days and they have never been trained, what, what will they not do, especially with the, with the shoot to kill order? The shoot to kill order was issued by Deputy President William Ruto and the leaders want it reversed. Mimi. Nimetoa amri kwa hawa askari wetu kwamba muhalifu yoyote aliye na silaha ameua kina mama na watoto pia na nyeye asibakishwe he has arrogated himself powers that he does not have in the constitution those are there is only one commander in chief and that one commander in chief is his excellency uhuru muigai kenyatta this illegal order, we kindly request the president to stop this order of shoot to kill. Several people have lost their lives and dozens have been displaced from their homes in the latest wave of insecurity in Baringo and West Pokot counties. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Kenya's electoral body, IEBC, has announced cancellation of the tender for the integrated electoral management system, citing the need to avoid possible delays. This is after a complaint was lodged with the Public Procurement Regulatory Authority regarding the tender. Instead, IEBC will now take an alternative procurement route that will enable delivery of voter verification kits within legal timelines.
with just 161 days before Kenyans head to the polls. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The head of the electoral body IEBC, Wafula Chebukati, is changing tact in an environment he says has been bombarded with court cases, hindering any meaningful procurement of materials needed to conduct a smooth general election. Tuesday afternoon, the IEBC announced new measures to curb the challenges it faces in setting up an electronic management system required to deliver credible elections. The commission has decided to cancel the tender awarded for the technology. The commission will put in place alternative measures. The chair remained vague on what the alternative method will be, but the announcement will no doubt spark intrigues over the three billion shilling tender for procurement of a system for voter identification and results transmission. It is feared this may force the country to resort to single sourcing given the tight timelines. You have vendors fighting out there, the vendor wars, which are trying to undermine our processes. And we as a commission are not going to allow individuals and people who are doing business to affect our processes. The decision follows a court ruling delivered two weeks ago to have yet another facet of the upcoming elections touching on procurement of ballot papers redone after the opposition coalition challenged the awarding of 2.5 billion shillings tender to a Dubai-based company. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission has re-advertised the tender for printing and delivery of close to 130 million ballot papers to be used in the August 8th general elections. The period we have is sufficient, the remaining period is sufficient to finalize this procurement of ballot papers and to have these strategic materials available within the timelines recommended. The availability of the ballot papers in time, as well as an integrated electronic system, which is pegged on Section 44 of the Elections Amendment Act of 2016, requires the setup to be in place four months to the polls and should be tested at least 60 days before the general elections. IEBC says, despite the time constraints, the commission is well on track in delivering its mandate in due time. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. Leaders from the National Super Alliance today asked residents of Tharakanithi County to take a chance on them and back NASA in this year's polls, telling them that they have been sidelined by Jubilee for long. Morimi Mwangi covered NASA's two main rallies in Tharakanithi. Kathanga Chini Market in Tharaka constituency, Tharakanithi County, was the first stop for the National Super Alliance Brigade on the second day of their hunt for votes after their Meru visit. Sisi tunataka kubadilisha Kenya kuunganisha wa Kenya wote kama kitu kimoja. Wakati hii kuna ubaguzi wa kabila kama vijana na kwenda kufanya interview ya kazi. Jina yako ni etamua kama utapewa kazi hiyo. Wanja wa siolo pale tutaupanua ili wakulima wa miraa wawa naweza kubeba miraa yao directly mogadishu. Tutaongea na president mpya na hetu wa farmajo, ambaye tunamuelewa. Ndugu yetu ambaye anaitwa William Ruto, anapenda kusema Mudavadi, Raila, Kalonzo, Weta, wanatafuta uongozi. That is true, tunatafuta uongozi. Na yaya anashikilia nini? Claims that the ruling Jubilee regime has marginalized the county, particularly on infrastructure development, dominated the NASA rallies. But while construction work appears to be ongoing along the Meru Marimanti Highway and on the Siakariga Uraget Road, ODM. the opposition leaders insist it's happening too late in time and could be a scheme to hoodwink residents to return Jubilee to power. We have no good roads, no water, no electricity that they have sent, they have connected uh, uh, power to every school. Here we are at Kadangachi, there is no power. They had products here, dengu, other things, which were selling at almost 100 shillings per kilo. Mawelo, they were selling at 100 shillings per kilo. Sogam was selling very high. But ta now when you speak to them, they're telling you it has come down to 25 shillings per kilo. Mimi sim kamba, mimi sim meru, wala mimi sim baluya. Lakini mimi niko na imani, 
serikali ya NASA ndio ile ambayo ita NASA makabila madogo na kila mtu ataheshimika na tatambulika katika serikali hiyo Tarakanithi electorate cast over 90% of their votes for Jubilee in 2013. But some opinion leaders in the county, such as Professor Isaiah Kindiki, the elder brother to Senate Majority Leader Kithure Kindiki, claim that the county has received a raw deal from Jubilee. As soon as they occupied the offices, they forgot what they had pledged. Exactly. That's why I would say that they have performed, but very negatively. Maybe that is the bit we didn't know when they were promising all these things. Kwa hivyo, wakati wa mabadiliko ni sasa, usimuangalia kalonzo wala raila wana weta ama mudavadi. Angalia kwamba hii ni sura ya Kenya ya kukomboa inji yetu. I want to plead with you, my brothers and sisters from this region. Don't be trapped in an archaic organization called GEMA. While the Tharakanithi vote is crucial to Jubilee, the onslaught here by NASA will no doubt send the Jubilee handlers back to the drawing board as the jostle for the 2017 vote intensifies. Muremi Mwangikichia News at Marema, Tharakanithi County.